The next thing I'd like to talk about is the, the industry, the industry as a whole, and specifically how you look at it. Because engineering is a little bit, so IT engineering, software engineering, or the IT industry is a bit weird. Like in every other industry where we have engineers and technology, we've divided it. You've got chemical engineers, you've got people who are expert at electronics, you've got people who are expert at, at, at um, um, ecosystems. Basically, there's a lot of like specialization. In IT, we kind of like seem to think that all IT is equal, that basically if it's with codes and binaries, kind of like it's all the same thing. And basically what I'd like to show you in this part, that actually that isn't the case, and what you pick actually really matters. So if you look at the industry as a whole, you see quite a few different roles there. You see people who make tools, people who make tools to sort of like make other tools. They make compilers and things like that. You've got people sort of like who operate large kingdoms. They're your landlords, so sort of like you're the Amazons of this world, where you can sort of like host something. Or they're the kingdoms like Apple and Google, where you can sort of like use their services. You're sort of like part of their thing. You could people who are simply producers of software, software you sell, software you, you, you kind of like uh, uh, um, use for something. You also got a lot of, uh, you will find employment with like primary users, like the government, or like Uber, or like uh, Airbnb, or like basically companies who use software to basically drive their primary process, to sort of like uh, book, book a, a hotel room, uh, get your tax and things like that. So they're sort of like you're actually in the primary process of those organizations. And you also got a lot of secondary users. If you work for Heineken and you're brewing beer, then obviously software is not the primary thing that organization does, but certainly it's a secondary thing, sort of like supporting and propping up all those processes. And the skills between those sort of like vary extremely widely, and that's something which isn't always sort of like um, picked up. So if you sort of like then think about that, sort of like if you look at sort of the various careers, and we'll sort of like go through them in the next section, is some of those are extremely specialized. And when you're sort of like in that tech, when you're in that sort of like area, you'll probably stay there for the rest of your life, basically learning more and more. Others are basically uh, uh, lots about like learning, like understanding a very uh, like wide range of things. And uh, sometimes sort of like that means you pick up a lot of transferable skill, which means you can go from company to company to company. And in other cases, it means that you get a skill in a very specific area, which is valuable to a lot of people. So your skill is not really transferable, but you, as you're in your role, is, are transferable. Um, and in some of these jobs, sort of like you'll find there are like lots and lots of people needed, and other ones actually are few rare specialists. A useful way of sort of like splitting that up is sort of like looking at the industry as a whole. And basically we can do that in this sort of like division like this. We say we've got the independent software vendors and the on-premise software. We've got people sort of like who work in the cloud. We've got people who lovingly handcraft our code, like every line, your handcraft compiler, a library, you're basically really sort of like doing the artisan work and, and making gorgeous code on which you can build big things. Or you're somewhere there at the top where you're actually more configuring and, and sort of like more adjusting things than actually writing original code. And of course, if you combine them, for example, these two together, you're sort of like a software as a service sort of organization or a platform as a service, or you're just a dead normal software company, an ISV, or you're more kind of like in the, 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 soft, um, the system integration and consulting area. So if you sort of like stick some companies onto that, you sort of like get uh, uh, small medium enterprises are kind of like often more here. Someone like Amstel or Unilever will basically make use of these things. Uh, an organization like TNT will actually already start building some of that software themselves. And if you, for example, work at Salesforce, you'll be writing a, very, a large amount of that. And if you're, let's say, at Exact or at some other company, you sort of like actually yeah, basically are crafting more and more of that, whereas in this axis you're going more towards consulting. So if we sort of like take that as a basis, then really sort of like if you look at the four credits, what skills you need, what focus you need, and also what you need to pick up between now and the end of your study, in many ways, is sort of like what skills you have there. So the first one we do is sort of like the, the, the quadrant here in the, in the, top, um, in the, the top right for you, uh, basically the, the cloud and sort of like configuration. And what you're sort of like largely doing there is making technology useful. You're, you're it's by far the largest group of people work there. You're, you're, it's, it's valuable on many levels for organizations, so usually if you're in that field, finding a job is not hard. And what you're largely doing is you're configuring a platform, you're configuring a process and making it work for the customer. So in this case, sort of like we have like an IKEA chair, which you've taken off the pack and you're modifying it to fit that organization perfectly. So that means sort of like you're really sort of like judged by how creative you are, how responsive you are to the organization you're really getting a lot of benefit from it because basically it's a huge and direct value for the organization. There's really sort of like a lot of payback, which is really fun to do. And you're incredibly close to the end user. It also means that you really have to understand what that end user is doing. So there's kind of like a bit of a, a dual deal here. And 
it's making things useful for the organization, which is like a transferable skill here. So it's, it's like learning how to apply technology to organization. And it's basically about, like, yeah, basically about getting quick results, getting things to work. The sort of like, so that's kind of like that group in that corner. So the second group sort of like is in the bottom uh, left corner. It's kind of like the opposite. So, so here you sort of like are talking about a lot of craftsmanship and, and, and a long learning curve which goes into that very specialist thing. It's very narrow. It's probably not, not that rare because you can probably sort of like do exactly the same thing at other companies. But typically sort of like at that point you're sort of like starting to become part of a, of a, of a community of other people with that specialization. Um, and, and basically sort of like you start building up some reputation. This is actually where a lot of the open source developers actually find, find their way to. And actually a lot of people who sort of like think they advertise on GitHub, that's kind of like where they end up if, if they sort of like, uh, if they're not careful. And that's probably not quite what they expect. Um, and it's also like where you go where you really love technology for the sake of technology. Um, you've got to play the long game because typically in that field it basically means like five years, ten years, there's nothing to learn to learn what you're doing because it's, it, this is actually yeah, where, where like shoddy workmanship so that comes back to bite, bite you. So that's kind of like that corner. Then the next one sort of like is also sort of like a corner again where there are a lot of people working sort of like in the um, basically uh, on the platforms themselves. So, so here, basically, you're, you're sort of like working on a platform and basically making, using it properly, making it sort of like do something useful. So you sort of like derive a lot of power from, from, from the platform you're working on. That means you can learn very quickly, much quicker than the other quadrant. Um, uh, it also means that you sort of like have to keep on learning because these platforms change and, 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 and change all the time. But most of your job will actually be about um, uh, sort of like working with other specialists, about keeping things up and running, getting things to work right. Um, and basically, you're really sort of like enjoying sort of like to get basically make things better all the time. So this is really sort of like an area where, where, where you focus on, on the process itself rather than technology. And then finally, sort of like in the top-hand corner, sort of like we have basically system, sorry, we have system integration where you're applying technology to problems. And again, that's a, a very large group in consulting. So what you find there basically is, is quick hacks don't work there. Uh, you're really sort of like enjoying the delivery of things. You're trying to sort of like uh, yeah, understand your customer's problem. And actually, often you're forced to understand them much better than the customer understand them themselves. And it's all about implementation. So kind of like if you then look at sort of like these areas you can go into, so basically you sort of like see there sort of like making technology useful, making the organization better, sort of like there on the, on the, on the, far, the, the, the far top. Then sort of like the next one below it is sort of like using technology to construct something useful and making the processes better, so you're actually one step removed. And sort of like if you then come toward, towards this way, it's really about making the technology more useful. So at the bottom you're really about the technology making that useful, at the top you're making technology useful for others. And then finally, sort of like in the system integration, you're applying technology to others. And what's interesting, if you think about those things, is that actually moving around these things is, is, is actually quite possible, but usually sort of like not that trivial. So actually to move from that quadrant to that quadrant is a very, very different skill set. So often you see people through their careers going from this one to that one and then up to up or however they do it, but generally sort of like not diagonally across. Um, and also sort of like uh, another thing to sort of like consider sort of like here is that 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 most people sort of like work in this area, which does mean that you sort of like need to have an incredibly broad understanding of all the platforms available, be able to sort of like very, very quick pick that sort of like things up, like how you can do that, how you can modify it, and you also get like a, a very, very quick sort of like reward and, and feedback uh, back from it. So that's kind of like the, the how we sort of like, how you could sort of like look at that, that industry.